Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this puts the DIY, and for quite some time now, I've had some issues with my analog phone. Uh, now you're probably like, why, why do you have an analog phone, Liz? Well, uh, I live in an apartment, and apartments often have buzzers, and I use an analog phone for the buzzer. Then I don't have, to have an extra power source or anything like that, it just works. Um, and I was having some issues with it that I couldn't hear out of the earpiece, so when people called up on the intercom, I heard nothing. Uh, it would ring and they could hear me. And I could even hit the numbers on the numpad to like let them up, but I couldn't hear them. So unless I knew someone was coming, chances are I wasn't touching the intercom. Now, this, uh, this isn't a very sustainable solution for a buzzer. So I decided to fix this phone. But this phone is very special to me because it is a hamburger phone. The hamburger phone was made famous by the film Juno, first released in 2007, which I instantly fell in love with because it came out right at the end of my high school years, and I related a lot to Juno because she was kind of like quirky girl, kind of like I was and am, and yeah, so I really liked that movie, and so when I found a hamburger phone, I want to say like just a couple months after the film came out, I instantly grabbed it, and it's done me well, but as I said, I couldn't hear anything out of it, and Finally, recently I just decided I'm gonna rip it open and I'm gonna try to figure out what's going on. So probably the most daunting part of fixing this phone and what made me really put it off was how was I gonna get into this without damaging it? Because honestly, more than half the reason why I have this is because it's the burger phone from Juno. So I didn't wanna break it, but it, because it wasn't serving me any purpose, I also kind of told myself if you do break it more, I, it's not really that big of a loss. So I could see by prying up with, I'm not 100% what, sure what they're called, but they're the plastic blue kind of wedges that they um, put in the iFixit kits. I was using that to kind of pry open. I could see the electronics inside. So I knew I needed to get in here somehow, but I also had a theory that the reason why the speaker wasn't working is there must've been something getting up to the top bun to make it a speaker. So I actually was able to use the SIM card pin that they include in the, the driver kit for the iFixit toolkit to shove out this pin in the hinge. And when I shoved that out, I saw the problem instantly. Um, there is a cable that connects through a small hole from the body of the burger to the top bun. <laughs> and it was completely, it was cut in half. It was, it was decimated. And I think it was from the friction of opening the hinge all these years it what made it break. So when I saw that, I knew what I was dealing with. So then I kind of got a better idea of what I needed to get out of the burger body <laughs> to um, kind of be able to do the repair. So after a lot of prying and kind of like being really careful, I was able to open up the body of the burger phone um, by using, first I did those plastic pliers. Then I um, also used the the kind of flexible metal jimmy that they give. I went around the edge and really like chopped at that to loosen everything up and that helped a lot. Shaved off a little bit of the plastic, but not so that it was noticeable. It was just kind of like making it so everything was a little bit more uh, movable and pliable. Um, and so then I was finally, it happened kind of all at once. I was able to just open it up and it was ready to go. And I did take a chance to kind of look at the inner electronics. So here's what I found when I was doing that. Take a look at the circuit board. It's a pretty cool board. I'm trying to get enough light on it. I can't totally take it out because as you can see, it's connected here with this switch and stuff. See a lot of caps, a lot of tiny resistors, like tiny. Um, I've also got some transistors, some diodes. And so if you look here, I've got the numpad which is coming through these wires and then connected to the board. And if we look at the bottom, that's the solder points for the buttons from the numpad. And it looks like those leads are going to these leads here. It'd probably be better, these leads right here. And if we flip over, that looks like it's probably a multiplexer, if I had to guess. Um, now we have an op amp here. You can guess that that's probably handling audio which makes sense because again, if we look at the solder points, which are right below, it's connected to these black leads. These black leads are going to the piezo in the body of the hamburger phone. So I was able to get the names of the ICs and do a quick search and found out what their actual 
names and functions are. So the HM9102D chip I thought was a multiplexer based on how the pinout looked, uh, but it's actually a tone pull switchable dialer with redial. Uh, so if you see here on the data sheet that I was able to find um, features a tone pulse switchable dialer, well, as the name implies, um, and you can see here the, the rates and that has to do with the tones that you hear when you're dialing into the phone because that's actually data that you're sending over a phone line. So it kind of shows you all the like things here and if we scroll down we actually get a detailed pinout and the keyboard scheme meaning like where you'd hook up each button on the phone to the pin so that you get the right tones for the right numbers. So we have coal 1, coal 2, coal 3, coal 4, and that corresponds to C1, C2, C3, C4. And you, so those four would be connected to C1, these four to C2, and, and so on. So that's pretty cool that it shows that. Uh, so that's what that IC is. All right, and then the other smaller one that I thought was an op amp is actually a telephone tone ringer. It's a K2411 chip. And so it is doing frequency oscillation, as you can see by the pin out here, so that it's actually like triggering different tones and rings and everything. So you can see it has the adjustable two tone frequency, which explains why there's that switch on the hamburger phone. And it actually even shows how you need to hook up the circuit. So it'd be interesting to see if that matches up on the phone. So pretty cool, I was glad I was able to find those so that I could give the proper information to people rather than just guess. So yeah, I'm gonna try to solder this wire back together and then we should have a hamburger phone that's fully functional. <gasps> these just came, these just broke off. So while I was just handling this board, these wires just fell off their solder points. Uh, luckily, I'll, I should be able to look back at the footage and see where uh, these were, at, what leads these were attached. So we're gonna have to do some rework on this board. This just got a lot more intense. Now, after I'd taken time to kind of look at the guts of the phone and I was satisfied with that, I did try to get into the top bun, but it felt just a little bit too tight and I really felt like I was gonna break something in half because this was a little bit thinner plastic than was down here. So I felt like I had enough of the wire available to solder to reconnect the ends, but I wasn't 100% sure. And as you just saw and heard, like I also had to now deal with these wires that had fallen off of the PCB while I was kind of looking at it. And when I looked back at the footage, at first I thought it was because I was being too rough with it, but they literally just kind of fell really limply off. So it, it's probably just with age. Um, that it happened, so I didn't feel like as bad as I did at the time. So now I knew I had to solder those back on as well. And soldering the wires back to the PCB was pretty easy. Another one actually fell off in between the time that I did the filming and soldering, so I had three to reconnect. So I just snipped back a little bit of the coating of the wire to reveal the copper it is strand of wire, so I find that to not be as easy to work with, but everyone has their preference. Um, I just reflowed the solder points that they were connected to on the PCB and then I reconnected it. And that went pretty smoothly. Um, and then came the uh, speaker wire, uh, which upon closer examination, it was double-stranded wire, which made sense, ground and signal that was in a casing. And that's when I realized I really didn't have enough wire poking out of the top bun portion to properly solder it back together because I didn't have enough leeway to strip back uh, the wire casing. So what I ended up doing, sticking one of the plastic blue priors in so that it was opened up and wedged. And then I used my ESD tweezers to actually pull the wire from the front towards the back so that I, it was able to get more length out from the bun without having to actually open up the bun. Because as I said, it just, it felt like it was gonna break. It really did. I tried and tried, but it just, it wasn't giving the same way that the actual body of the phone gave. So I just didn't feel comfortable forcing it anymore. And by doing that, it really solved my problem and I was good to go. Then I was able to strip back the gray coating and then I was able to resolder. I actually added two little pieces of jumper wire between the two signals so that I could get a little bit extra length uh, when putting it back. And that worked out well. Um, I do have some things I wish I had done a little bit differently. I didn't use, um, for some reason, and I think just because I was 
more concerned about making sure the connection was solid. I cut two smaller pieces of the wire casing and put it over the leads instead of like the whole thing. I, if I'd gone back and like really thought about it, I would have done one long piece to cover the jumper wire and the leads. Uh, that would have made a lot more sense, so I wish I'd done that. Um, also, looking back on the soldering, I wish I'd just rewired <laughs> um, the whole phone, taken out all those really like crappy cables and just done everything from scratch. But, you know, maybe I'll, if I have a problem again, I now know how everything's wired up and I know that I can do that to try to like make it a little bit better. But um, I did a quick test at my uh, mom's because she has a landline uh, and I was able to call it and I was able to hear myself. So success. Uh, and I think this is a great example of why the right to repair is so important and why you should be empowered to repair your things, even if they seem a little silly. I mean, analog phones, not a lot of people are using them, but it was pretty cool to take a look at it and see the guts of it and how it's working and also do a little bit of repair work. Um, another thing you may notice, I have this little bit of wire sticking out. I <laughs> failed to think that I like about how I wouldn't get, be able to get the wire back through the hinge because I wouldn't have, it was already, it was now connected to the body of the phone. So I have it sticking out the side now, but that also solves the problem where it's not gonna be rubbing against the hinge. So that's good. So hopefully that won't give out, um, at least for a bit. So that's nice. But yeah, this has been another episode of Blitzly DIY. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Have you repaired things? Are you into phones? Did you like the movie Juno? Cause I know I did. Um, find me on social media, links are down in the description. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Got some more soldering and electronics adventures in the pipeline. Uh, until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.